sorry that we're a couple minutes late. We had some technical difficulties, so we are rolling with it. Um, so we are Holistic Wellness Partnership. And while we are best known for our work as plant-based chefs and educators, uh, our main goal is to introduce our clients and our audience to uh, a multiple array of different healing modalities. And so today what we have prepared for you is our uh, jackfruit carnitas bowls. And I think we're gonna get going on that. So we really want to thank Erica, um, who just joined us, for giving us this opportunity. Um, you know, the Arthritis Foundation is really powerful for us. Uh, I myself struggle with fibromyalgia, so um, I feel a lot of empathy for people that are struggling with arthritis. So um, we wanted to pick out a recipe today that was really packed with anti-inflammatory foods. So inflammation is one of the body's main defenses against toxins. Um, and also one of the main contributors to many types of pain. Um, I know that personally, um, the more I eat this way, the better that I feel. So we chose to show you how to make something that is like a twist on something you're familiar with. So I know a lot of us like to go to places like Chipotle and get a burrito bowl. So instead today we're doing this jackfruit carnitas bowl. So it's packed with anti-inflammatory foods and hopefully gonna introduce you to some new things. Um, so the most important thing to remember, if you remember nothing else, is that the best way to decrease the inflammation in your system um, is to buy and eat organic and non-GMO foods. Yes, so why is this necessary? Um, organic foods are not sprayed with uh, herbal pesticides such as um, glyphosate, and glyphosate and other um, herbicides are actually really damaging to the body. Um, they actually um, disrupt our digestion, uh, can create inflammation in the gut and cause leaky gut syndrome as well. Um, so buying organic minimizes um, our reaction to this. So, um, and we also just learned that um, the way that the glyphosate interacts with your gut, it actually prohibits your ability to make essential amino acids and hormones. Um, so that was something that was really powerful. They were talking about the link with serotonin. Um, so if you eat things that are covered in pesticides, um, that prohibits your body's ability to make serotonin, which makes you feel happy. Um, it also stimulates an inflammatory response. Yes. Um, so we prepared everything ahead of time just because we only have uh, 15 minutes. So we wanted to kind of break all that down, why we choose organic, and now we're going to dive right into it. So the base of the bowl we made today is greens. Um, so we have a mix of some romaine lettuce chopped up pretty finely and um, a, like a baby spring mix combination. So um, you might only think on a salad, but we yeah, sometimes we'll just put a nice base of greens underneath it. Um, and really, greens are so vital for us. They hold tons of phytonutrients, and they make our system more alkaline versus acidic, and we'll touch on that later. Um, but that alkalinity is one of the things that's going to help reduce inflammation. So Sarah's bringing over our jackfruit carnitas. So I know many of you probably have had pork carnitas. Um, we are fully plant-based, um, but it's something we both like. So um, jackfruit is this very strange fruit that comes from Asia. And you can buy it in a can. You can buy it fresh too, um, but you know it takes like a giant machete to hack it open. So we really like using the can. Um, and it, it's a fruit, but it's actually got a really mild flavor. It's not super sweet, um, but the texture is what's really cool about it. So when you buy it and you take it out of the can, it looks like this, almost like an artichoke. Um, but as you pull it apart, you can see it shreds down like a pulled pork would. So, Sarah's gonna talk about how we made this part of the dish. Yes, so um, this is actually the jackfruit mixed with mushrooms, and you can do this without mushrooms if you don't like them or you're allergic to them. And um, so, so this was just uh, one teaspoon of avocado oil. We cooked down the mushrooms in it, we added in the jackfruit, and then we added the spices on top and let that cook down on medium to low heat. So you can see that it comes out looking kind of like shredded um, carnitas or um, like pulled pork. Um, so it's a very good consistency. 
um, the cumin and the coriander and we actually put coconut aminos in with this. Um, you can use salt if you'd like. This is so, coconut aminos for those of you who are not familiar. It's one of our secret weapon foods that we yes. put in a lot. Um, and the cool thing, Sarah's going to put some jackfruit in our bowls. Um, jackfruit is also has these antifungal properties. Um, so not like it's going to beat up the mushrooms that you put in with it, um, but the harmful funguses that exist sometimes in our environment, it'll break that down, as well as being anti-inflammatory. Uh, mushrooms are also um, one of the only natural plant sources of vitamin D that you can get. So the really best way to get vitamin D is to sit out in the sunshine. Um, but we are actually in Asheville, North Carolina, so right now we've got kind of a gray day. So since we can't get our full sun, I'm going to eat these mushrooms. So I put the carnitas in one. This is a trick she taught me. I used to just like heap everything in one, and it tastes great, but it doesn't look pretty. But she's really good at making it look pretty. Um, so for this dish, we kind of are going to do like little piles. Um, the next component we have for you is fajita vegetables. We love fajitas, um, we love fajita vegetables. So um, for this one, we just did peppers and onions. So um, they both enhance your immunity and support um, your blood sugar levels. Um, and one thing we like to teach people too that's pretty easy to remember, um, you know, we can talk about vitamin D because we do this every day, um, but you really just want to eat the rainbow. So we've already got green in our bowl, now we've got like the clear white from the onions, and we've got yellow and orange pepper in here. You could use green, red, whatever your preference is, you could use one of each if you wanted to. Um, but the reason that foods have different colors is because they have different vitamins and minerals in them. So you can think about it that way, like, okay, I haven't eaten anything red today, like, can I eat some tomatoes? So that's a really nice way to add these vital nutrients in. Yes, and onion and garlic actually is very anti-inflammatory, but also um, boosts your immunity and helps regulate your blood sugar. So uh, those are really good ingredients to add into any and all of your dishes as you cook. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I know, you know, Erica's based in North Carolina too, so this is the Arthritis Foundation of North Carolina. Um, so I'm assuming most of you love grits, right? Can we get like a like or a high five or a comment? So we also love grits, but corn does not love our system. And corn is one of the hardest foods to find non-GMO and organic. So we found an amazing substitute for grits. Oh yes. Yeah. Buckwheat. Buckwheat. So, when you first hear the word buckwheat, you probably think of wheat, if you've never heard of buckwheat before, um, but it is not a grain, it is a seed. So um, this is really great to uh, add in some plant-based protein and um, as well as some healthy fats and things of that nature. So uh, we created some buckwheat grits, cheesy grits, for the base of this. and. Good uh, ingredients to add into your regimen. However, um, we wanted to make this recipe as anti-inflammatory as we possibly could, and so this is why we chose the buckwheat grits over doing like farina or rice. Um, you can also do cauliflower rice um, and quinoa. quinoa and things of that nature. So I'm gonna grab those. Yeah, so you cook these pretty much like you cook other grits. Um, it's a three to one ratio of water to grits. And I don't know if we mentioned, but I'm gonna re-mention for anyone new, um, the recipe is gonna be posted in the description for this. Um, so all these measurements and everything. So we did a half a cup of these dry grits in with a cup and a half of water, bring it to a boil, we threw in some salt, and then another ingredient you may not be familiar with unless you're plant-based, which is called nutritional yeast. Um, so this is a really funky little product, um, it's kind of like a powder, um, so you can see that. And it has like a cheesy flavor to it, um, but it's fully plant-based. Um, one thing we do like to mention, a lot of the nutritional yeast you can buy in the store is fortified with vitamins. If that's all you can find, it's fine, but if not, getting unfortified is better um, because it's not like chemically treated in any way, and so we usually buy that online but it adds a nice cheesy flavor. Yes. So you'll throw cheese, and you're going to show them the color of that. Um, so <laughs> the nutritional yeast is your cheese, and the salt to give it the saltiness. Um, so we'll put a scoop, and we actually also love this um, in like a breakfast bowl, so you can make your cheesy buckwheat grits, um, do some roasted 
potatoes, you could do the same, like fajita veggies, um, and then, you know, something like a tempeh sausage, and that would make a really nice breakfast bowl with the greens underneath, because that really is a secret weapon. So, I'm going to show you how this bowl is coming together. So we've got our grits, our veggies, our carnitas, um, and now we definitely need some salsa. Yes. So when it comes to salsa, the cleanest way that you can do is to make your own, of course. However, we're in the kitchen a lot and we also believe in finding healthy shortcuts. Um, there are really good uh, companies out there that are creating stuff that is clean and is healthy. So just be sure to be reading your ingredients. So um, we like the Mir Glen Organic brand. Um, they're one of the only salsa we found that don't have added oil and um, other uh, unhealthy oils in their salsa, but also they're 100% organic, um, low sodium, so just make sure you're reading all those ingredients. And also for this one, again, um, we're going to avoid, I know a lot of salsas have corn or even cornstarch, something like that, so we're going to avoid that too because of the inflammatory um, potential there for the corn. Okay, so the last component Sarah needs to grab from the fridge because I forgot to take it out <laughs> um, is we may do a cashew sour cream, um, it's cashew crema, and this is something that I learned how to make many years ago, and it's like really a star of uh, a lot of our dishes. So um, you'll take cashews, a cup of cashews raw, and again, you want to really... Um, this tricked me. I bought some like roasted cashews to use and they were roasted with canola oil. So try to buy either like dry roasted or plain. So you boil them in a cup of water, get some really soft, or you can soak them overnight and you put them in a blender with half a lime. That's what gives it that like sour creamy flavor. One clove of garlic about this size or two or three or four if you're really into garlic. Um, and then uh, just some salt and a little bit of water. So when you blend that up, it creates like a really nice, we left it really thick because we wanted that like thick dollop of sour cream on top. Um, but you could add more and more water and make it thin. You could even use it like a dressing. So it's pretty versatile. Um, you could also do the same recipe without lime juice. So just the cashew salt and water and come up with like a nice, pretty simple and garlic. I didn't say that part. Garlic's important. Um, <laughs> and you get like cashew cheese and so we'll use that cashew cheese for lasagnas and things like that. Mm -hmm. So now we've got our carnitas bowl, put it all together. Um, so again, we kind of kept all the components separate, um, but I know that when we're about to eat this for lunch, I'm going to stir it all together and probably put some hot sauce on top because I like spicy. I don't really like spicy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so if you have any questions right now regarding the recipe at all, um, please go ahead and leave it in the comments. Um, we hope you enjoy this flavorful dish. Um, the jackfruit and the mushrooms together are really nice. Um, so uh, you're really going to enjoy the jackfruit. We did put the recipe in the comment or in the description on this video for y'all. And One thing um, I forgot to say that's important yeah. um, for the cashew cream. So we don't eat dairy, and the main reason we don't eat dairy is because it's acidic to your body. Acidity in your body causes inflammation. So um, I think when people are thinking about going plant-based, that's the thing we get the most is like, but I love cheese, right? Um, we recently found out it's so easy to make oat milk. It's just oats and water in a blender. So we've been making that, um, but we do have a lot of great tips for cheese. So if that's something you're trying to work on letting go of in your life, definitely reach out. So we do other live cooking classes on our personal Facebook Live. Um, so this Saturday, May 9th at 5 p.m., we've got a cooking class. Um, and those we um, do a little more humorously. <laughs> uh, we still educate, but um, we get a little more banter going. Um, and we actually do those live where we're showing you as we cook things. Um, they take about 45 minutes usually. So um, you can tune into that. We also are releasing a weekly immune boosting meal plan. So we're up to week seven. And those are, um, the cooking classes are free, and um, but you can donate if you'd like. And the meal plans, we just ask for a small donation. 
Yeah, and um, other ways you can find us, our handles are Harmonize Your Health on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, we post recipes on both platforms all of the time. And uh, I think that does it for our, well, our website. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, the link for our website is also right there at the top of this video. Um, and Sarah also was going to mention our coaching program and our cleanses. Um, yeah, so go to harmonizeyourhealth.info and we have one-on-one -on -one coaching if you are interested in learning about how plant-based foods can help to alkalize your body and decrease inflammation, as well as different events hosted on there. So thank you so much, Erica, for inviting us to this amazing uh, lunch rendition of your uh, series. So we hope that we get invited back and uh, we hope that y'all enjoy the Stay recipe. Stay safe and healthy out there. Please. All right. Thank you. Thank you.